Hey everyone, this is Chase at Rocky Mountain HVMC, and today we're going to share with you our top five tips for GNCC racing. So if you have never done a GNCC race, let me just start this video by saying GNCC races are gnarly but they're an absolute blast. In this video today, we just wanna share with you five tips that are just gonna help make you more prepared and help you have a good time while you're out there racing. Now, before we dive in and we talk about these five tips, a couple things we just wanna get out of the way. And the first one is just bike setup. So with GNCC racing, you wanna make sure your bike's in good running condition. As obvious as that may sound, you gotta remember that these races are long. It's a two hour race for some classes, a three hour race for other classes. So you gotta make sure your bike's gonna go the distance. It would be terrible to travel all that way just to have a DNF because your bike didn't last. So make sure your bike's in good condition. Also, think about your tires and your tubes. Heavy duty tubes are definitely recommended or even mooses if you have those. And also when it comes to tire selection, make sure you have good tread life, but also think about the tires you have and you wanna make sure that you have a tread pattern that's gonna do well in the type of conditions and terrain that you're gonna be riding in. So that's what is your bike setup. Now, let's talk about protection real quick. And this goes for any type of racing that you're gonna be doing, whether you're doing desert off-road racing, GNCC, even motocross, you always wanna make sure you have good protection. Now in GNCC, especially on the East Coast, a lot of times it's wet and muddy conditions, so you get really deep ruts, a lot of rocks, logs, roots, those types of things. So having discards on your brake rotors is really important. Maybe some radiator braces if you don't have any, nice, good, heavy-duty skid plate. And if your bike, if there's one available for your bike, you can always pick up a linkage guard as well. So just make sure that that you have good protection for your bike. So those are just kind of the basics, but now we're gonna cover five tips that for us, for GNCC racing, you shouldn't overlook, but unfortunately, a lot of these are pretty commonly overlooked, so that's what we're gonna talk about next, and let's get it started off with tip number one, which is vision. All right, so when it comes to GNCC racing, you gotta think about vision. So GNCC races, they're an East Coast race series, and a lot of times you have wet and muddy conditions. And in those conditions, if you don't have good vision for the entire race, you're really going to struggle. So here's some tips to help you out. First thing I would say is bring multiple sets of goggles. So in a GNCC race, you're gonna be having pits as you come through, so you're gonna be stopping. So if you have a set of goggles, you can swap out your goggles throughout the race if you need to. Now, when it comes to your goggles, you're gonna to wanna to have laminated tear-offs. There's a lot of riders that just use standard tear-offs, but with laminated tear-offs, you're gonna get stacks. Typically, they come in a stack of seven, and you're able to get a lot more laminated tear-offs on a set of goggles before your vision will start to look cloudy. I know a lot of riders actually use up to three stacks of laminated tear-offs on a set of goggles, so you have 21 total. But when it comes to just standard tear-offs, for me personally, anytime I usually do more than three, my vision starts to get a little bit cloudy. So bring multiple sets of goggles. If you are gonna run tear-offs, run laminated tear-offs. We actually have a great video where I show you how to put tear-offs on if you've never done that before. Also, very important, in muddy, wet conditions, tear-offs do great. But when it comes to being wet and muddy, nothing's gonna be better than a roll-off system. Because in those types of conditions, if water gets between your tear-offs and the lens, doesn't matter how many times you pull a tear off, your vision's still gonna be blurry because you have that water there. With the roll-off system, if you've never used or seen these before, it's pretty slick the way they work. So you can see, regular set of goggles, but you have a canister on each side. So when you start to get mud or water on the lens, all you do is just take this tab and you pull on it, and what it does is that it pulls a fresh set of film across the goggle. And when that happens, that's gonna clear out that mud in the water, giving the rider a good vision. Also, what's great about a roll-off system is that when you compare it to a laminated tear-offs, like I said earlier, some riders do three stacks, about 21 tear-offs. With a roll-off system, you can get up to about 50 pulls, so it's gonna last a lot longer than tear-offs would. So in any case, so just make sure, bring multiple sets of goggles, have those laminated tear-offs, and always make sure you have a set of roll-offs with you. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is a cool little trick that riders like to use, take an extra lens that you have for a set of goggles and what you do is you're just gonna tape this to the end of your visor on your helmet. So by lengthening the visor on your helmet, it does a couple of things. One, it's gonna help block water if it's falling, if it's raining. Also, if you duck your head, that's gonna help block some roost if you're right behind a rider. That's what you see a lot of riders do, even in professional supercross and motocross, is they'll just take an extra lens and tape it to the visor. Or even for some helmets, they actually do have extended visors available that you can buy. But that's tip number one, is your vision. Now the second tip that we have is with your handlebars. Now you don't have to do this, but what a lot of racers will do for GNCC racing is actually cut down their handlebars to make them a little bit more narrow. 
And the reason they do that just makes it a little bit easier to navigate when you're in those tight wooded sections. Now as far as how much you should be cutting off your handlebars, that's going to come down to rider preference. If you're not quite sure, you could ask a buddy or you could comment below and ask and there's a lot of riders that will be able to help you out. Now another thing to keep in mind with handlebars, rider fatigue. Like I mentioned earlier, these races are long. You're two and three hours at a time, so you got to do your best to not get too tired. There's a lot of handlebars that are made that are actually designed to help absorb as much vibration as possible. That's going to make a big difference in the long run. So some of the handlebars that I'm thinking of are the ODI CFT handlebars. You have the Pro Taper Fusion, the Pro Taper Evo. Some of the handlebars I would stay to stay away from in this situation are the neck and handlebars, the bars that come stock on a KTM. They're pretty dang rigid. Also, at Renthal, twin wall bars are pretty stiff. But another great handlebar that a lot of riders here at Rocky Mountain really like are these fast flex bars. And that's what we have right here on this bike. So with these, what's cool is they actually have these elastomer dampeners that do a great job of absorbing vibration and they help with rider fatigue. So that's our second tip is just with your handlebar setup. All right, so tip number three, hand guards. Hand guards are a must have for GNCC racing or really just any off-road racing for that matter. It's going to block the roost, the rocks, the debris, the mud, the water. If you haven't noticed, we have a lot of different hand guards to choose from a Rocky Mountain, but ultimately you have two categories. You have an MX style and you have a full wraparound. So an MX style is a type that's actually going to be open on the ends, but a full wraparound you can see right here is going to wrap from the outside of the handlebar all the way around to the inside. Now, if you're having a hard time choosing which one you feel is going to be best, we'll just know that a full wrap around is going to offer a little bit more protection for your levers. So if you go down in a crash or something as simple as a tip over and you don't want to worry about your levers breaking, then a full wrap around would probably be the best option to choose in that scenario. But if you have some breakaway levers and you don't want to run a full wrap around, then go with an MX style. But in any case, you want to make sure that you have a good set of hand guards on there. And also to go along with that, think about your gloves. So especially if you have wet and muddy conditions, if your gloves are getting wet, well, you're going to want to change these out. And like I said earlier, because you have multiple pit stops throughout the race, if you bring multiple sets of gloves, you can change these during the race. And trust me, having a fresh set of gloves, having dry gloves and keeping your hands dry makes a huge difference in a long race. So that's tip number three is run some wraparound hand guards or MX style and then have multiple sets of gloves. So for tip number four, you have got to stay hydrated. If you've never raced on the East Coast before or even been there, just know it is very humid and you are going to sweat a lot. So it is crucial that you stay hydrated throughout the day, but that you also have a way to stay hydrated during the race as well. So do yourself a favor, pick up a hydration pack. We have a lot of different options to choose from. A couple up here that I want to show you. The first one is this Hydro Pack from Fly Racing. So very simple design. It's essentially just going to hold your water bladder, which will come included with this pack. You do have one additional pocket up here on the top, but that's just about it. So very simple pack. Again, just going to hold your water to help hydrate. And from there, another one that we really like is this GPX 4.5 Hydro Pack from Liat. What's cool about this, if you got your pack here, you can see a little bit bigger than what we just showed you with that Hydro Pack. So you have more compartments available to store more items. But also what I like too is that on the inside here, you actually have this big back protector that's going to offer some protection for impacts. And also what's cool about this is you're getting the best of both worlds. It actually connects right to their 4.5 roost guard. So if you wear a roost guard but you don't like to wear a hydration pack over the top of it, well, this will solve that problem. So a really cool pack coming from Liat. Now one more thing to keep in mind with hydration is your helmet. So with a helmet, having a SIP tube, you want to make sure that you have a way to route your SIP tube. There's even manufacturers now like Liat, who has their 4.5 and their 5.5 helmet, that actually has a channel cut into the chin bar for a SIP tube. Alpine Stars has their SM8 and SM10 helmet, which actually has little channels in the cheek pad and the chin bar for a SIP tube. So there are some different options available, or if you just look it up, there's a lot of forms. Ask your buddy, ask other GNCC riders. A lot of riders will modify their helmet and drill a hole in the chin bar, the mouth guard area, for their SIP tube to go through. So it's something just to keep in mind. You want to make sure that your helmet is set up to take a SIP tube. But that's tip number four, is make sure stay hydrated. All right, so tip number five, you want to prep your bike for mud and also prevent overheating. Now, just like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to your vision in GNCC races, a lot of times it's not uncommon to find yourself in wet, muddy conditions. So you want to prep your bike for the mud. We see a lot of pro riders doing this. So what we recommend, take some foam. We have a couple different options here. This is some foam from Tusk. We have this in a couple different thicknesses. And you just want to pack the foam where you don't want mud to pack. 
So if you have a skid plate, you can put some foam in your skid plate to keep the mud out there. Put it between your brake pedal, your shift lever, you can even put it in front of your radiators just to help prevent mud from packing in. Now when it comes to overheating, this is something pretty commonly overlooked, but it's very important. You know, in a long race, if your bike overheats, you're gonna DNF, that's a bad day. So, a couple things that you can do to help out that. One, radiator cap. So you can get a high pressure radiator cap that's gonna help prevent your coolant from boiling over sooner. You can also, when it comes to your radiators, just like with that foam, keeping mud out of those as much as possible is really gonna help when it comes to your bike staying cooler. So what you wanna do is you can either get some radiator guards, we've got these ones right here from Bulletproof on this KTM, or Twin Air and Polysport actually make these radiator sleeves. So you actually just slide these right over your radiators. You can see it's just a fine mesh, so it still allows the airflow to go through, but that's gonna have really help prevent that mud from packing in. A couple other things you can do, you can see we have one on this bike already. You can get a radiator fan kit. So these mount right to the back of your radiator and when your engine temp reaches a certain temperature, it will automatically kick on. These actually do a really good job of helping keeping your engine temps down. And lastly, you can run something like the super cooler from Boyson, which actually just help promote better flow of your coolant through your engine to help promote more cooling. So just remember, GNCC races, wet muddy conditions, use some foam, put that in the areas where you don't want mud to pack, and do everything you can to keep your engine temps down and prevent your bike from overheating. All right, so that concludes our top five tips for GNCC racing. But if you have any other questions or comments, leave those below, we'll get your questions answered. And like I said earlier, if you've done a GNCC race before and you have any tips or tricks to help the riders out who are possibly looking to do their first race, make sure to leave those below and that's really gonna help them out. To pick up any of the products that we talked about today, click on the link after this video or head over to RockyMountainATVMC.com. Don't forget, orders over $75 ship free. If you guys like this top five and want to see a lot more just like it, we'll make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you stay up to date on the latest gear guides, product reviews, top five videos, and how-to videos that we're constantly filming. I am Chase. We'll see you on the trails.